Hey, welcome back everybody. This is part number five of how to build a blog with Laravel. And in this video, we're gonna start actually passing data from our controllers into our views. This is a critical step as we start learning more and more about the Laravel framework. Because as we, as we know, controllers need to provide all the logic of the application. I keep drilling that into you. And it's important. To, it's a very important aspect because views should be dumb by default and they should never have any of their own data. So how do we get data into the views and to display it to the users? Well, the controller creates the data and then has to pass it into the view. And that's what we're gonna be learning straight ahead. All right, so to get this next part done, we're gonna learn how to, to get our controllers, build up our controllers so they're doing a little bit more, and then we need to teach it how to take advantage of the controller and then pass it the data that we create in the controller to the view. And so that's what we're gonna learn right now. Now for those of you that are um, following along from the previous video, we're just picking up right where we left off. If you had kind of a gap in between the videos, go ahead and open up your project again. Um, the blog project in your text editor, and then I've got the um, localhost running as well. So remember to go into your, your folder and then do php artisan serve to launch the server. Okay, once you're to this point, I've got my pages controller open. Once again, under its under app, HTTP, and controllers, and then your pages controller. Make sure you've got this uh, in your kind of down like second nature where you know where the controllers are located, and we've got our pages controller. Inside here we have a bunch of different actions. Um, these are the ones we were working on before. We have our home page for get index, our about page for get about, and then get contact for the contact page. And right now all we're simply doing is returning a view. So it doesn't really do anything. The controller's not providing any logic, but now it's time to perform some logic. What I'm gonna do in this view is we're going to kind of just demonstrate creating logic. I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable for my first name, my last name, and then we're gonna perform a basic function, which basically takes my first name, adds it to my last name, and then passes that full name into the view. And while this is very basic, and you probably would never do this very much in practice, this should demonstrate kind of what a controller would do. It takes two pieces of information, does something to it possibly, and then takes that result and passes it to the view. And now the view will simply demonstrate it. So the view doesn't do any of the functions, it only demonstrates it. It only like uh, visualizes that for the end user. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna create a variable called first, and I'm gonna set that equal to my first name. And then we're gonna create a variable called last and set that equal to my last name. So Alex Curtis here. Don't forget the semicolons at the end. Then we're gonna perform our function. Not a very complicated one, but um, I'm gonna just call it full and set it equal to my first name, and then use the period to concatenate. Hopefully you know that with PHP um, prior to this video, but you use periods in, in PHP to put two strings together. So we use the period, and then we're gonna create a space. So we use the, um, uh, the quotation marks with a space in the middle, because we need our first name and then a space and then our last name. So we do a space, another period to concatenate again, and we'll do our last name. Okay, very, very basic. Hopefully this is, it, it, if, that, if that's completely new to you, then it, what we do in the next few videos might overwhelm you. So just, we might wanna brush up on PHP if that's the case. Okay, so we've got full now represents our first name and our last name concatenated together. And now it's time to pass that into the view so we can access that data in the view. So let's go ahead here, view, and we're gonna use a special method called with. And the with method takes two arguments. And the first argument is the name that you want the very, the name that you wanna access the variable as in the view. In this case, I'm gonna call it full name. And notice that's different than the variable is currently. Currently the, name, the variable is called full, but I want it to access it in the, um, in the view under full name instead of just full. So let's go ahead. So we've got full name, we use a comma, and now we're gonna do what we want full name to be equal to. Now I could just set it equal to Alex Curtis, obviously, and then it would work, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna kind of show how it would be dynamic. And that's that we're gonna take advantage of this variable called full, and we're gonna set full name equal to full, okay? So we've now saying 
render the view pages.about with a variable called full name and set full name equal to full. And full is performed earlier on, basically concatenates my previous, um, my full name. Okay, so that's what we have here. Let's go to our, um, our view. So it's under resources, views, pages, and then about. And here you can see that we've got our title says about me. Well, I want it to display our full name. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna do about and then dollar sign, full name, right? Makes sense, pretty easy. Let's go ahead and save, okay. And then when we come back here, we'll go ahead and refresh. And uh-oh, it just says about full name. It has that dollar sign thing. It isn't actually, it's not really working, right? It's just being very literal with this and not actually displaying our name. Well, that's because we have to tell, in via Blade, we need to tell the view, don't render this literally, you render this as if it's a variable. Okay, and there's an easy way to do that. In Laravel, all we do when we're accessing the, the value of a variable, we just add double parentheses. So do double parentheses here, and then on the other end of it, you're gonna do another double parentheses, you're wrapping full name in parentheses, and um, now it should actually display the full name. So let's save this and come back here. I'm gonna refresh, and sure enough, it actually displayed the full name. So it's working exactly as we would expect. So that's exactly how this works. And you can pass multiple variables into the view. Um, let's come back to the pages controller. And I wanna show you another way, an easier way I should say, where we can pass um, uh, data into the view. And it's a little bit cleaner. So when we use this with method, we can obviously set the name for any, any name we want and it can match the first one. So let's go ahead and just change this one to full name. And then I'm gonna change it because full doesn't exist, so full name here. So we're saying that we're gonna create a variable called full name and set it equal to one that's already called full name. Now, one thing that's important to note is that these variables, unless you explicitly pass it in, these variables are not accessible because they weren't explicitly passed in. So if I come into my view and I try to just do first name, you're gonna we're gonna get an error here. Let's render that. We do get an error, it says undefined variable first. So the variable called first is undefined. The view does not have access to every variable that's in the controller, okay? We need to pass in the ones that we want. So that's why um, first doesn't work. But because we pass in full name, it should work. So let's change this again to um, full name. And once again, we refresh and it works, okay? So, um, that's one way to do this. I wanna show you a cleaner way to use the with command. What we can do is we can simply take the name of the variable that we want it to be called, this first this first part here, and we can actually just attach that to the width. Let me show you what I mean. Let's get rid of the width here. Let's capitalize the first letter after width. So in this case, full name is a capital F, width, full name. And then um, we just add parentheses like this. And then the, the variable we want full name to be equal to, which in this case is also the currently the full name. What this does is this is a shortcut for what we just did. It creates a variable called full name and sets it equal to, in this case, this full name. All right, so everything should work without any changes here because even though we had a capital letter right here, we only do that to separate the width and the name of the variable, but in here, it's always gonna be start with a lowercase um, letter. So e this is gonna work because this full name becomes all lowercase full name, okay? So I'm gonna save all this. We're gonna come over here and just refresh and we would, as we would expect, it renders exactly the same. So this is just a shortcut for what we did earlier is, is this. Now what if we wanna pass multiple variables into the view? Well, we can do that as well. Um, let me pass in my email address. So let's just call it email, set it equal to alex at jacurtis.com. And now let's um, pass in the email address. I'm gonna do the exact same, the shortcut version. We're gonna call with email, and then we're gonna do dollar sign email. And that should pass in a variable called email and set it equal to this email. Um, let's come over to our about page, our view. And um, I'm just gonna put it right here. Email me at, and then we do our double brackets and our dollar sign email. Okay, let's go ahead and save, refresh, 
and you can see email me at and it's got my my email right there so we can pass as many of those on as we want and back in our uh, controller here we can um, we can just keep attaching more and more of these uh, oops more and more of these with commands as many as we need available in the view of course you only want to pass the ones that you absolutely need into the view don't just create a string of of random ones but just know that you can have multiple um, items if you want the last thing that we can do is we can pass in an array so let me show you that as well we'll, we'll create a date um, let's create a variable called data and we'll just put all the data we want to pass into the view into the one um, array called data so we're going to call it with data and then we're going to create another variable here called data so um, let's go ahead and do that here we're going to create a variable called data and we're going to make it an array an empty array okay so we're going to set data email equal to email and we're going to set data um, full name equal to full name and then now when we say with data we're just passing in this variable data so this variable data is actually an array okay so we can use this as well this helps us pass large amounts of information over to the view let's come back to our view this is no longer going to work because we passed in a variable an array called data we didn't pass in a variable called full name so what we need to do here let's go ahead and delete this and let's go date um, our variable data and access the full name attribute right because if we go back to our controller data full name is what is actually equal to the full name and then same over here we're going to do data data and then we'll do um, email and now this should work let's refresh and it, we get the exact same result so that's another thing that you can do really it's all up to you on how you want to run it but this is how you will pass um, data from your controllers into your views so pretty easy um, hope that was fun guys I tried to make it a little bit faster um, hopefully it wasn't too fast for you but we're gonna start going at more of this speed um, moving forward because I don't want to you know you guys to get too bored getting slowed down but I'm also trying to make it easy to follow so let me know if that was um, too difficult to follow but this is probably the speed I'm going to be doing going forward is a little bit faster than we were doing before um, and in the next video we're going to learn a little bit about generators how to generate a controller which is going to make things a lot faster that's going to be a quick video and then we're going to learn more about the blade templating engine in the video that's after that where we can do even more right now all we've learned about blade is this right here the ability to add these double um, curly braces and output the data of a, the or the value of a variable but there's a lot more you can do we can do if statements we can do um, loops and all sorts of stuff like that and that's what we'll learn in the video after that so there's a lot coming up make sure to stay tuned if you've just joined us right now feel free to go back and catch up with the other videos I've got a playlist down in the description that you can use to go through and watch them all and um, be sure to subscribe for updates and to get the new videos as soon as they come out see you guys in the next video